Hello everybody, my name is Benjamin Bloom. Thank you for joining me on the channel once again for championship content. Attempting to keep up with all of these fixtures. Some teams in a run now of three consecutive three game weeks. I think West Brom, QPR, uh, there may be others that I haven't... Uh, twigged those FA Cup teams as well. But everybody this week is on a three-game week. So just split up the preview show into two halves, just so I can keep up. Um, so we are at Wednesday. Today there were five games. Last night, the remaining seven today, we are going to go through. Um, we've got four of the top six playing tonight and a big all-top six clash in Sheffield at Bramall Lane. Let's start. At the top, where we have Preston, who are 14th, versus Norwich City. Norwich leading the table by two points. But what we've got to look at now is this five-point gap between Norwich and Sheffield United in third position. That is the real difference that we need to look at because... You can have such a big swing now on days like this. You know, you talk about six-pointers, etc., etc. Norwich lose, Sheffield United win, the gap is two points. If Norwich win and Sheffield United lose, the gap is eight points with 15 games to go. So, really, really crunch time now at the top of the championship. And the Blades there, they have a difficult game. Uh, Vrancic rolled his ankle on Sunday, looked fairly innocuous, just defending a corner. Um, so he's going to be out for probably this run of games, probably seeing back towards the end of the month or the start of March. So likely it will be Tribal and Tetty in midfield for Norwich. They didn't look as good without Vrancic as they did with Vrancic on Sunday. I saw them um, in the flesh and that would be my assessment of the midfield there. Leitner and Closer will travel, so expect Leitner to be shoved back into that midfield as soon as he is physically ready. Um, they're up at Bolton at the weekend, so you'd think those two are travelling possibly more with a view to the second game than the first one. Um, I saw Preston against Derby a couple of weeks back. They looked like a tough team to play against. Still a few left on the um, treatment table, Malt. Robinson, Bowden, Harrop, definitely unavailable. Pearson and Brown both withdrawn against Bolton at the weekend, but you'd imagine, um, given how important they are to Preston, that they're both going to be um, back in when it comes to tonight's game. Um, if you are Norwich, you're looking at this. Preston away midweek, Bolton away um, on Saturday. Surely you're looking at a point tonight and four points. You'll be really happy if you take all six. Fantastic. Um, if you take three, you've got two away games out of the way and only 13 games left. Norwich now know that anything, 1.9 or two points per game for the rest of the season, they are up. They are in the box seat here. It is there to lose. They've just got to keep churning it out the way they have been doing. Um I suspect Preston might get something, um, a Norwich will focus for the win on Saturday. Let's say a draw, but hey, no one would be surprised if Norwich won. They've surprised everybody all season, so I'll say it with that caveat. I just find Preston a hard place to go and a good, well-drilled, aggressive team as well that plays some, some good football. Um, second place, Leeds. Leeds versus Swansea. Leeds really need to sort their form out. Um, I don't know if it's anything to do with Spygate, but um, since after that derby game, two wins in the last eight in all competitions. That must predate the, bar the derby game even. Um, down to second place, Sheffield United in striking distance. The team, they look a lot less kind of injury ravaged at the moment, uh, Bamford is now back in and it looks like the plan is for Bamford to be supported by Roof behind. Roof manfully all season been playing that lone striker role really well actually. He's got loads of goals as well. Phillips is back from suspension. He obviously got that late equaliser on Saturday. For sure is a doubt so possibly this is uh, an easy way of Bielsa to sell 
solve this now uh, midfield holding position. Uh, rest of the team all looks fairly sorted. You've got Douglas and Clark still out short term. Dallas and Berardi a bit longer. You'd expect Hernandez to play down the left ahead of Clark and that would be about it. It would be very interesting when all of those guys in the middle of the pitch are fit and then of course does Alioski move back forward as well so still some tweaks that could work in Bielsa's favour but he really needs to get these results going he's kind of made a rod for his own back doing that brilliant winning streak with all the injuries now everyone expects the senior players to come back in and then to be even better so um yeah, definitely a bit of a drop-off from Leeds. 10-day gap after this game due to FA Cup stuff. So that could be exactly what they need. Um, a little bit of time off, regroup for that final sort of 14-game run. And you'd expect at the end of that gap, Douglas and Clark will be back and you're just waiting for Dallas and Berardi. Uh, Swansea have been in pretty good form. I think they're 11 points in six games. That is That's decent playoff form. Actually, if you extrapolate that all the way out, could be interesting to see Dan James off to um, Leeds after that transfer collapse. You'd expect him to be very motivated and you expect the Leeds fans to um, uh, probably be quite pleased to see him because he was very keen on that transfer. Um, Leeds State, well, they have to win this, don't they? Um, Big Ellen Road crowd, no doubt. I'm sure they'll be big for the rest of the season now. Um, so, surely leads for the win, you would think, in that atmosphere, Swansea. May struggle. Um, here's the big game, the all-top six challenge. Bramall Lane, Sheffield United in third versus Middlesbrough in sixth. Um, I was at Villa Park for the Blades. Monumental collapse. Now, they've got to be hoping that this isn't some kind of odd sliding doors turning point moment um, and that this wasn't where they lost their confidence and all of a sudden the automatic challenge died. They need to bounce back from this um, because we should be sitting here saying great away performance by Sheffield United, sharp, imperious and they're in second place but they're not. They shipped those three goals and dropped the points that would have put them up above. Leeds, be interesting to see what Wilder does here, whether... Medine, who was very effective um, up front for them, um, punching holes for Billy Sharp, whether he stays in or whether it was planned out already, whether it was right, it's going to be Medine with Dow behind for this away game and then uh, McGoldrick and Duffy back in. Going to be interesting. Remember, Middlesbrough got powerful, large defenders that Medine. Uh, would be a good match for Medine's a good match for anybody physically, frankly. No Basham uh, for the Blades and his marauding run. So Craney will come in. Interestingly, when he did come on, I'm pretty sure... No, he didn't. He swapped exactly in for Basham. So, no, it would just be a like-for-like -like swap. And Johnson is obviously ineligible because he came from Borough. Uh, Borough seemed to have come out of their mid-December slump. And I say slump, but the truth is they were never out of it. They were always up in the top six. I think they were just performing under everybody's expectations for them, given their squad. They've got 15 points in their last eight games, which is nice form indeed. They are in sixth place with a game in hand, but it's tight up there. You know, one switch against you, you win and your rival loses. And this is all changing around. Um, just Norwich to play after this one for Borough. Nice little battle up front selection battle between Hugel and Asomba Longa. Hugel generally starting for Borough with Asomba Longa coming in off the bench after they've been softened up. I remember he had that very decisive cameo in an equally tricky game away at West Brom. Another top six game. So maybe Asomba Longa makes an impact. Difficult one to call this. Can Borough go back to the tight form that they showed for most of the opening months of the season? Or will Sheffield United bounce back from that horrible last 10 minutes at Villa Park? Um, it's going to be tight. Let's just go slightly with... Oh, is it going to be a draw? Let's go for a draw. It's, I'm just Sheffield, just edging towards Sheffield United. Um, but, hey, it's championship. Who knows? Any result wouldn't surprise me. Um... Speaking of surprises, it would take a great surprise for Ipswich in 24th to beat Derby in 7th. Last night, the gap to safety, 10 points now um, with uh, Rotherham's draw and Ipswich obviously not playing. Rotherham, good fight back there. Uh, Hull Bolton got the win as well. So Ipswich, 8 points 
uh, adrift at the bottom. But remember, it's that 21st spot that everybody's really interested in. Uh, Fred D. Sears, he went in with Tom Tribal. They bashed knees, cruciate ligament injury. Um, it's his third one at the moment. Incredible. Never rains, but it pours, right? Uh, Paul Lambert went far more direct against Norwich. Um, no centre-halves receiving the ball from goal kicks. Uh Keen a target man and Sears and Judge around him. So um be interesting to see if he now takes that system to the end of the season. Looking like Harrison or Quainer will come in for Sears. Uh, Quainer had a knock, so possibly edge towards Harrison. Uh, Derby will definitely be without Mount. I think he's back training at the end of the week. Lawrence and Marriott will both travel. Um, I'd expect Waghorn will be up front and Marriott will be on the bench, but you kind of feel if you're bringing Lawrence that he may well start. I don't really see him as a kind of sub-type player. Uh, Waghorn, obviously, sold to Derby from Ipswich, so the narrative is all set up for him. Last time I saw Derby, they had Nugent in the nine position with Waghorn, 4-2-3-1, off to the right. They moved Waghorn to the nine position. He played against Southampton, scored a couple, played against Hull, scored a couple, Go figure, he is a very nice player. One of my favourites from last season. Who am I kidding? My favourite player for Ipswich for last season. Uh, Derby have been chased down by Bristol City, but they've surged up to fifth now. So uh, three points behind them with a game in hand. They will be looking keenly at Sheffield United Borough um, as if the Blades help out Derby here. Derby get the win, then they're back into sixth. And would you believe that Borough will drop down to seventh, despite me saying they've just been in nice form. Problem is, no one can touch Bristol City's form. Um, it's hard to predict Ipswich to do anything this season, so let's go for an away win. And I hope that I'm totally wrong, and that flips on its said, and Ipswich somehow managed to get the home win. Uh, Brentford versus Villa. Dean Smith returns to Brentford. He made the jump October the 10th. It looked like Brentford were not going to recover. They were rubbish for ages. To be fair, that run started before Smith left, but um, Frank took a while to sort it out and only seems to be changing to three at the back and employing his own system, putting his own stamp on it, made it work. Um, Villa, like I say, saw them on Friday. Um, They were really bad, to be quite honest. They were slow and ponderous. Um, The ball not sticking, obviously missing Grealish. I think probably missing Tuanzibi. Chester, some of those bodies at the back, although they, the Villa fans seem to like Mings a lot. As I mentioned, no Chester, no Tuanzibi, no Lansbury, no Carroll, although I think Carroll is a bit more short-term and Chester may be close. Uh, Grealish, we just don't know. They get asked about him all the time and we just don't seem to get a solid date. So I'm expecting another game or two. Should be a good one on form. You'd expect it to go to Brentford, wouldn't you? Um, you definitely expect Brentford to be able to score past Villa. So um, let's just edge towards a home win there. Right, two more to go. Let's move this on. Reading in 22nd versus Blackburn. Reading now, Bolton breathing down their necks. I've said this for ages. The teams are so bad down there that as soon as one of them wins, that actually makes a big difference. Bolton getting a great win last night <clears throat> at Birmingham. <coughs> Excuse me, that puts Reading and Bolton equal on points indeed. Uh, Blackburn dropped to the bottom of that little 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th mini league after two defeats in a row. They've been on a good winning streak up to that point. Two nil-nil draws for Reading would intimate that they are tightening up, which might be a way to get them out of this. They need wins though, but I keep reiterating it. Any of those teams down there, other than Ipswich, Ipswich need probably four or five wins, but Bolton, Rother and Reading only need two or three wins in quick succession and that's going to put a huge dent in the other team's um, challenges because the standard has just been so bad. Um, Nelson Oliveira posted on Instagram. Um, his face looks like it's repaired, which is good news for him. So perhaps he'll be able to return to help out, maybe on the bench with Maite coming in up front. A win would take Reading out of the bottom three, although that's been the case most of the season for the team sitting in 20 seconds. So, and they haven't managed to do it. Um, Going to be tight. I wouldn't bet against another nil-nil, to be honest, because Blackburn are tight as well. And they've got good home form, so Blackburn would probably be quite happy with that. Right, last one. Wigan in 19th versus Stoke in 17th. What the hell is Stoke doing in 17th? Goodness me. Uh, Stoke in bad form. They're going to the DW, where Wigan are generally good. Wigan, eight home wins this season, only bettered by those top three. Leeds, Sheffield United and Norwich with more nine 
for Leeds and Sheffield United and 10 for Norwich. One win in 10 in all competitions for Stoke. Really bad start for Nathan Jones. He's been in charge for six of those 10 games, so at least he, he was responsible for the one win. But Stoke really um, in transition at the moment. Seemed to go with Vokes and McLean supporting. Um, so perhaps a call for Afobe or Berahino if they're a bit toothless in the last game to come and help out. Morsi back from suspension for Wigan. Evans um, and Powell possibly available too tonight. That's a big um, return for Wigan if he can get back. Been out a while. Um, I tend not to back against Wigan in these um, home games against teams around them. So either draw or home win. Let's go for a home win for Wigan. Um, Right. We've got through it. Um, Thank you for watching. I know I've split this uh, preview up into two so if you've watched both thank you if you've watched this one absolutely brilliant get your comments in as i always say if you support one of these teams you probably know more about what's going on than i do so really interested in your input down below thumbs up if you're just um a lurker and don't um feel the need to contribute comments really well received what i'd really love you to do though is hit the subscribe button if you follow the championship loads of content in here i think i'm coming up for 50 games i've been to this season in the championship so some knowledge accumulated here but if you watch the live streams a really good group of people subscribe to this channel and comment and all share information with each other it's starting to become a really good community so i would really recommend subscribing wholeheartedly Follow me on Twitter at Benjamin Bloom. I will be making my way to Ipswich tonight for Ipswich v Derby. So, Ipswich fan, Derby fan. Hey, any fan is probably worth... Um, everyone likes to see a car crash, don't they? No! We yeah, we might have a chance. Who knows? But, yeah, Waghorn probably to score. So, check out that review coming out probably, I don't know, about 10.30 should be up by then. Thank you for watching. Over and out. Goodbye. <laughs>